If you've used Google Maps since 2022, it's likely that you've unknowingly interacted with a radiance field. That restaurant is not a photo and it's not CGI. It's a full-blown radiance field running on your phone and in real time. And Google has already quietly rolled it out in more than 150 cities. These breakthrough technologies are coming together to power a new experience in Maps called Immersive View. It allows you to explore a place like never before. First rolled out in 2022, Immersive View is the world's largest public deployment of radiance fields to date. You can check out restaurants nearby and get a glimpse inside. Google's head start is no accident. The original Nerf paper was born in 2020 alongside the University of Berkeley and Google Research. Its co-first authors Ben Mildenhall and Bertul Srinivasan joined Google full-time afterwards working with Nerf author John Barron, while final first co-author Matt Tansik spent time at Google-owned Waymo before co-founding Nerf Studio and then joining Luma AI. Since then, Google has produced a steady stream of breakthroughs such as MipNerf, MipNerf 360, RawNerf, Murf, Smurf, Baked SDF, and of course, Zip Nerf, rounding out what sounds like a roster from the movie Dodgeball. Laser. Laser. Like many of the Radiance Field pipelines, the Google Maps workflow works by taking a series of 2D images and running it through Structure from Motion. Once the camera poses are set, they use the information paired with the images to reconstruct a Nerf on Google's fleet of GPUs. They then create pre-rendered 360-degree video from the Nerf. That output is then streamed into a user's device to allow them to move around the space. At least that's how it worked back in 2023. Many of you are probably assuming that Google shifted away from Nerf to 3DGS because of its fast rendering rates, but you actually wouldn't be correct. At least not entirely. Going back through old interviews, Google proudly claims to be using Nerfs. We use the imagery and neural radiance fields, which is a generative AI technique, to actually take a photo and transform it into a 3D representation of a place. So almost like you can look into a restaurant. We apply advanced 3D graphics techniques such as volumetric rendering and ray tracing. But in actuality, they're using both. In March of 2024, the Google research team released a paper called Radiance Field Informed Gaussian Splatting or RadSplat. RadSplat is actually a hybrid representation that pairs both nerfs and Gaussian splatting together to get the best of both worlds. But how do you even have a hybrid radiance field? RadSplat is training a nerf using Google's state-of-the-art method ZipNerf and then uses that nerf to train a splat. But why would Google do that? Nerfs still have unquestionably higher fidelity and lifelikeness compared to the Gaussian splatting counterpart, and ZipNerf is the king of nerfs. Even two years after its initial publication, it's still the state-of-the-art method to benchmark against. This fidelity makes for a strong prior to inform Gaussian splatting for the second reconstruction. And here's where we see the benefits of the two methods working together. Google gets the high fidelity representation of a NERF and combines it with the real-time rendering rates of a splat. But there's another surprise. The rendering rates of rad splat are not just real-time, they're ludicrously high, pushing up to 900 frames a second. The lifelike 3D of radiance fields have been on full display, but getting Google to state exactly what was powering immersive view was elusive to say the least. While the official Google marketing states that they are still using nerfs, the Gaussians can be plainly seen in captures. Recently, I have also started to notice that Google has been experimenting with uploading spatial images, such as tying an image of food to a table or attaching a reference image. I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg as it relates to helping people explore and navigate the world in lifelike 3D. For people wondering how these images were captured in the first place, Google was able to leverage existing images paired with a small team of capturers. You may also be interested in seeing if you can capture radiance fields for Google too, but don't get your hopes up. The Google team has not yet made it available as a paid opportunity. It's important to note that these radiance fields are currently only powering interiors within Google Maps. The exteriors and landmarks are still using photogrammetry, but a blog post in 2023 claimed the Google team was already doing extensive testing to bring outdoor radiance fields to the platform. While Google might have a head start building out large-scale lifelike 3D reconstructions, they're not the only one. Apple has consistently been hiring for engineers with Gaussian splatting experience to create hyper-realistic Apple Maps, and Meta-owned Mapillary has been supporting nerfs for years. Finally, the most well-known would be Niantic Scaniverse, whose initiative to create spatial intelligence has just launched a beta of its crowdsourced map. Large industry-specific companies such as Zillow, which just added Gaussian spelling support last week to showcase listings with SkyTour, are enabling their customers to preview home exteriors in lifelike 3D. Other companies such as Esri and DJI are beginning to also enable people to reconstruct city-sized radiance fields in their solutions. Expect Google to continue to build out functionalities and capabilities for their immersive view and extend it into the world of outdoor radiance fields, add dynamic weather layers, and eventually offer location-backed ads and commerce. 
your expectation of imaging could shift from flat photos to interactive volumetric scenes sooner than you think. If you learned something from today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel and letting me know if you would like to learn more about how companies are currently using radiance field based representations.